Hey guys, let's set up groups on Google Workspace so you can use it for distribution lists as well as folder security. So to start, go to admin.google.com. I'm already there. On the left, select directory and then groups. I have a few groups that I've created. To create a group, select create group. To create a group, name your group. I'm going to name mine finance team. And for group email, I'm going to also put finance team there. For group description, this is optional. We don't need to put anything here. And for group owners, we can put one now or do one later. For labels, it's default for mailing, but we're also going to add security, which I'll show you how to use for our Google Drive. Now let's modify the access type. It's currently default for public, but we can change it to team. Announcement only, restricted, or custom. Custom will not highlight, but you'll see that it changed. For who can contact group owners, we're only going to set group owners and group managers to contact that person. For who can view the conversation, we want group members and group managers and owners to view them. For who can post, we want pretty much everyone to be able to post, including external people. For who can view members, we only want group members, managers, and owners to be able to view them. For who can manage members, we only want owners and managers to manage them. For who can join the group, I'm going to set it to only invited users, so only admins can add members. To allow users outside your company, you want to toggle this on. This is helpful if you have freelancers that would work with you. Once you're set with that, click Create Group. Next thing we need to do is modify some advanced settings. Hover over the group and select Edit Settings. Scroll down and you'll see Advanced Settings. You can rename your group here, add group description, and add a welcome message. For group features, no additional features is selected but you can turn on Collaborative Inbox. And what does that mean? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna duplicate this window and open the group. I'm gonna select the finance team. I have a test email already. If we select that, you can see that you have few options here. But if we turn on Collaborative Inbox under Settings, we'll save changes, go back to our group, and refresh that page. Select the message. You'll see that you have more options like assigning the message to another group member. There's also mark it as complete, duplicate the message, and no action needed. If we go back to the group settings, we can also add a shared label. Let's enable this and then save changes. Go back to the group message again, and we're going to refresh this page. Select the message. There's an added icon over here that you can use to create labels for certain messages. I'm going to create a label. So something like this will be created. You can also assign multiple labels and assign it to one message, but there's no option to color code those labels yet. Let's go back to our group settings. We've already configured some of these settings, so I'm just going to scroll down. For posting policies, you can turn off allow email posting if you don't want the group to get an email when someone sends a message to the group. But you'll still be able to view them on the group page. Or if you only want to get emails for the group, you can click allow web posting. Next, conversation history. That's automatically on when you have collaborative inbox. We leave who can reply privately to others. For who can attach files, we're actually going to change this to anyone on the web, just in case someone's trying to email this group and they want to add screenshot attachments. Who can moderate the content? We're going to leave it as group managers. 
and who can pose as a group, we want group members to pose as a group. For default sender, you can change it to a group address, but we'll leave it for author's address. If you are replying to a message, you can easily switch the sender so it's from the group address. For message moderation, I won't change anything there so the message is delivered to our group automatically. For new members restrictions, we're not going to put any restriction on that. But for spam message handling, I'm going to change that to post suspicious messages to the group so we don't miss any emails in case Google thinks it's a spam email. A few more settings we need to configure. For subject prefix, add one here if you want to easily identify the email that is for a group. This is also useful if you want to create a rule in your inbox. I put finance inside a bracket. You can make it fun by putting emojis instead. You can have fun with this. You don't necessarily need to put it inside a bracket as well. You can just put a text or just emojis. Each message you get for a group, there's an email footer included. We don't need this, so I'll turn it off. And for auto replies, we're only going to turn on enable auto reply to non members outside the organization. And then you can add your message, something like this. For post replies to, we're going to leave it as sender chooses recipient. This way we can include everyone in the group or just the recipient. And for conversation mode, I'll leave that on so emails in the same subject are in one conversation instead of multiple emails. And for member moderation, I'll leave that responsibility to the group managers. And then that's it. Let's click Save Changes. Now we can add members in this group. So on the left side, you'll see Members. Then click the Add Members button. I'm going to add the group owner first, which is me. And then I'm going to add the group members, which I only have one for this test. You can also add a group manager if you want. You can also add a welcome message when you add a person in the group. For subscription, it's default that you get an email every time someone emails the group. But you can change that to digest, which you get one email when there are 25 messages sent in a group. You can choose abridged, which you get one email every day that could contain up to 150 messages but would only contain a few lines from the email. Or you can choose not to get any emails for that group. And you'll have to log into the web posting to view the messages. So I'll leave it for each email, and then click Add Members. And that's it. I'm going to go to the groups. Now, if you've gone this far of this tutorial, please help me out and click the Like button. I'm going to select the Finance team, and then send a test email to this. I'm also going to open my personal email. I'm basically just going to send an email to finance team at markguys.ca with the test subject. Now we should get an auto reply because we've set that. So as you can see, that worked. Now I'm going to go to the groups, refresh this page, and there's the email. Now, if we log into John Smith's account, which is one of the members of this group, so the email is there, including the prefix emojis that I set. As a member, I can reply to this, but I can only reply as a user and not as a group. If you want to be able to reply as a group, go to the group page, and to access that, on the top right, you'll see the waffle menu. Look for groups and it will open a separate tab. Click the group, then select your message, and you can reply here as a group. All you gotta do is click this drop down, and then select the group name. Then add your reply, and then click post message. Keep in mind that if you send it from the group account, and you have a lot of members, it's sometimes hard to know who actually replied to the message. Now the last thing that this group is useful is by using it for security access. I'm going to open my Google Drive. You can easily share a file or a folder to a bunch of people by giving them access as a group. For example, I have a shared drive here which I use as a server. I have a finance drive. Click the three dots 
Select Manage Members. Type the whole group over here. Select it. Then you can choose to modify the access. You can give them Manager Access, Content Manager, Contributor, Commenter, and Viewer. So in this case, I'm only going to give them Contributor Access so they can only add and edit files and not delete any. You can include to notify them as a group. Everyone will get an email if you have that on. And you also see it on the group posting. If you want to learn more about Google Share Drive on how you can use it as a server, I've got a tutorial on that. Thank you for watching. Put your questions and comments below or simply say thanks if this video is helpful. And while you're at it, please subscribe and click the like button so you can also help me out.